there, can you crochet a square? Because if you can, I can teach you how to make this gorgeous pullover sweater in no time and it's completely constructed flat. So let's get started. Welcome to what might be my favorite sweater this season. And I want to first start by talking about the yarn for this sweater when we jump into supplies. I created this with the Upcycle Alpaca Worsted Blend um, yarn in the color Sage. This is 219 yards per 100 grams, and it is labeled a worsted weight. However, I do find this particular yarn to be a little bit tricky with gauge. Depending on the color that you're making it in, they gauge slightly different. Some are a little bit thicker than others. Sometimes that's what you get when you have these upcycle type blends that are made in batches and then then once they're gone, they're gone. So if this yarn is sold out by the time you get to this video, I want to make sure I give you other options as well. So if you haven't ever done a gauge swatch, definitely do so for this sweater. I have a guide on how to do that. I have a blog post that will teach you all about gauge and how to fix it. But what is really fun about learning how to do gauge swatches and knowing what you're doing with them is that you can substitute yarn. So when I was working up gauge swatches, I found that the Heatherly Sport Weight, which is 328 yards per 100 grams, worked up quite nicely with even a little bit more of a drape than using this upcycle alpaca blend. So I thought for this video, I would show this in another option of yarn. So I'm going to be using the Heatherly Sport Weight to make the size medium on camera today. And this is a size small that I had already worked up with the upcycle alpaca blend. Find a yarn that you love, that you want to work, make that gauge swatch, make sure you like the drape and the feel of it and that it matches gauge. And then you can go ahead and jump on in, even with a different yarn than one of these that's recommended. You will also need a size H5 millimeter hook for this pattern. We're going to be using the same hook throughout. A pair of scissors to cut those ends. Stitch markers are always a fabulous idea. And then you'll need a yarn needle to weave in those ends. But other than that, this is a really, really simple design. If you've never done a garment before, this is not a bad one to start out on. I do consider this an advanced beginner. We're not working in, in rounds for this. We're simply working in rows and flat. So this is work completely flat and then seamed underneath the arms and down the sides. Um, it's a really fun make to do. So let's go ahead and let's jump in and get started. This has worked cuff to cuff. So we'll start with our first cuff ribbing stitches. Now I also want to give you another quick tip. If you have purchased the ad free PDF that you can download and print, I highly recommend grabbing a highlighter and highlighting the size that you're doing. It just makes working it so simple without worrying about getting the wrong stitch count. If you happen to look in the wrong spot, it'll make your crocheting much easier. So that's one tip that I highly recommend. We're going to start by making the ribbing for our very first cuff. So we will create a slip knot and place that onto our hook. Then we are going to chain 11. You can tighten down that last chain. It's our turning chain here. And starting in the second chain from the hook, we are going to single crochet into each stitch across. So that will be 11 stitches. Now today I'm making the size medium on camera, but this is the same for each size in this adult size pattern. So now we have 10 single crochet stitches across and we're going to turn for row two, we're going to chain one and working in the back loops only. So when you look at a stitch at the very top of the stitch, the loop closest to you that creates this V is the front loop and the loop farthest away is the back loop. So we'll be working in that back loop only single crocheting into each of the 10 stitches across. Now that we have done row two, we are simply going to turn and repeat that again. So we'll chain one and then in this in the um, back loop only, we'll single crochet into each of the 10 stitches across. Now we're going to repeat row two until we have a total of 34 rows for the size medium. And this is going to create the very first cuff ribbing. 
So go ahead and work uh, 34 rows of this single crochet in the back loop only, repeating row two for every single row. Now after doing 34 rows of ribbing, we're going to rotate our work from working it the, this way, we're gonna rotate it and we're gonna work across one side of the ribbing here. So I'm going to chain one, that's not gonna count as a stitch, and then I'm going to do one slip stitch per edge across the one side of this ribbing. What you can also do is grab a stitch marker and mark that very first stitch in this row so that you don't lose track where your first stitch is. Always a good idea. So I'm gonna keep slip stitching across here, one slip stitch per row, which means we will have a total of 34 stitches across one side of this ribbing. After slip stitching 34 stitches across here, I'm going to turn my work and chain one. And then for this row, the chain one does not count as a stitch, and we're going to be working half double crochets into the front loop only all the way across. So working in the front loop only of those slip stitches, we are going to half double crochet in each stitch across. Looks like I made my last one a little bit tight here, but I think I can get it sometimes. There we go. So working in that front loop only, half double crochet into each stitch across. This does not change the stitch count for size medium. It is still 34 stitches. All right, now this next row will be a little bit more adventurous. We're gonna start doing the half double crochets into the third loop, which is how our half double crochets will be worked for the remaining of this pattern, unless it is indicated otherwise. So we're going to turn our work and right away, we are actually going to be working in the half double crochet in the third loop, as well as um, increasing for this row. So your third loop is actually facing you. It's not on the back side Because we're working in rows, we have, if we look at the top of the stitch, that V, we have this is the front loop, this is the back loop. But this right here is what's called the third loop. So it sits right in front of your front loop when you're working in rows. So I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to be working into this right here. This is the third loop. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into that third loop, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. But we are going to be increasing on this row two as well. So I'm going to do another half double crochet in the third loop into that same stitch. And don't forget for this very first rows, mark the first stitch in your row. It will just make life so much easier. So now I'm gonna work the half double crochets in the third loop until I get to the last stitch in this row. So when you're working in rows, I do find it's easier to work in the third loop because it's facing you versus being on the back side. So I'm just gonna keep working below that front loop, so in that third loop, all the way across until that very last stitch. So now that I'm at the last stitch in the row, I wanna increase on this side as well. So I'm going to do two half double crochets in the third loop in that last one. So now we have increased on each side of this sleeve. And so we've gone from 34 to 36 stitches for this row two. And now we're going to be doing some repeats um, for this sweater. I'm going to turn my work and show you how to do a non-increasing row. So we just did an increasing row and all that is is putting two half double crochet stitches in the third loop in the very first stitch and two half double crochet stitches in the third loop in the very last stitch and that increases on an increasing row by two stitches. So I'm going to turn my work and chain one does not count as a stitch, and I'm simply going to work the half double crochet into that third loop all the way across. And I wanna show you what pattern starts to show up when we're working that half double crochet into the third loop. And this is where it gets really unique and brings in that knit look when we work these stitches this way. So now on the front, you can see where we are popping those stitches forward and they almost look knit working across there. It's really, really pretty. So I'm gonna keep working in the third loop all the way across for row three. So now that's how we work a non-increasing row. We're just half double crocheting the third loop in each stitch across, and then I'll turn my work. 
So this is just going to be doing some repeats as we build out the sleeve. So we're going to be increasing on the sides every so many rows until we have built it out just to the stitches we need so that it fits over our entire arm. Now for the size medium, we'll be re repeating the increasing row every two rows 18 times. So my next row I'd wanna increase on. And then after that, we're just going to continue to work without increasing until we have a total of 46 rows. So I'm just gonna repeat that for you one more time. So after doing the row one and the row two, for the size medium, you want to increase that, or you want to repeat that increasing row every two rows 18 times, and then you'll simply continue to work non-increasing rows until you have a total of 46 rows. So I'm gonna work that up and come back and show you what that looks like. So here's what our sleeve will look like once we have it increased the amount of times that we need. And just to recap, for the size medium, now I have a total of 46 rows. But what I did after doing the um, first couple rows here is I repeated an increasing row on every second row. So every two rows, I did an increasing row, and I did that a total of 18 times until I had 72 stitches and then I simply did the remaining rows without increasing to get the length of the sleeve. Now the next steps for this sweater is going to be adding the area that will be the front over the shoulder and the back. So to do this I'm going to go ahead and turn my work in the last row that I worked. So I've turned my work and normally I'd be ready to start working across the sleeve if we were still doing it, but that's not what we're going to do. I'm simply going to remove my hook from my working ball and then you can either use the center or outer pole of your current um, ball that you're working from or you can grab a second hank of yarn because you'll need it eventually. So you can always grab your second ball or hank of yarn and use that for these steps. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by picking up this last stitch. So insert your hook into this last stitch on the left side, and then we are going to join and chain a total of 52 chains on this side. Now that you have chained 52, very carefully, you can go ahead and remove your hook, and we don't wanna tighten down the very last chain. We're going to be working into these chains once we get going on this row. So you can go ahead and fasten it off, and that's all we, we need from that ball of yarn, and gently pull your strand through so that it does not come undone. A quick note, this is the length underneath the arm of this sweater. So if you want this length to be longer than what you're seeing in the pattern, do more chains here, and then we'll do more chain, the same amount of chains on the other side plus a turning chain. So the way to adjust the length from the underarm down of this pattern is right here in this step. It's however many chains you're doing on each side. So now we're going to set this aside and go back to our working yarn. And we are going to also chain on this side, but we're going to chain 53 to get that turning chain. So we're doing the 52 like we did on this side plus a turning chain. So go ahead and chain 53 chains. Now after chaining 53 stitches, we can go ahead and we can uh, tighten down that last chain. That's our turning chain. And then we are going to start this row by single crocheting into these chains for the first um, few stitches. So I'm gonna single crochet into the second chain from the hook and then I will single crochet into the next nine stitches. So this will be a total of 10 single crochet stitches to start out this row. Now you don't want your single crochets to be too tight because this is the ribbing on the bottom. So we don't wanna make it so tight that it, it just like pulls too much against our body. And now for the remaining chains until we get to these uh, sleeve stitches, I'm simply going to half double crochet. So half double crochet in the chains until you get to the, the, the stitches that are the sleeve stitches. All right, so now that I have worked my half double crochets across there, it is time for me to work across these sleeve stitches and we're going to be working those in that uh, third loop that's on the front of the stitch from the row below and that will keep working that in pattern. So I'm simply going to half double crochet into that third loop that is I'm sitting right there on the front of our work. 
and I'll work those all the way across our sleeve stitches. And now that we have worked all the way across using the half double crochet in that third loop for the sleeve stitches, what we will do is you'll half double crochet across these chains until we get to the very last 10 stitches. So simply half double crochet in each chain until the last 10 stitches in this row. Now that we have 10 stitches left in this row, we are going to single crochet for the last 10 chains. Now after adding on all of these stitches for the size medium, our stitch count is now 176 stitches and that will be different depending on which size you are making, but we are adding the same amount of length underneath the arm for each size in the pattern. And so if you did want to adjust that, the time to do that is when you are doing this row, if you wanted to add or have it be even more um, crop top style version. So we're going to go ahead and turn our work. And for rows two through 10, they are going to be the same. So this is how rows two through 10 will be worked. We can chain one, which doesn't count as a stitch. And for the first 10 stitches, we will be working in the back loop only single crocheting. So the first 10 stitches of each row will be to single crochet in the back loop only for 10 stitches. Now after single crocheting in the first 10, now we're going to half double crochet into that third loop all the way across our row until the last 10 stitches. So we'll be working those half double crochets in that third loop all the way across until those last 10 stitches where we will single crochet in the back loop only for the last 10. So it's really simple, it's relaxing, pick up your favorite show or your audio book and work those um, rows two through 10 in that way and then come on back. Now here we are with an odd looking piece of fabric but it's going to come together nicely. So after doing these 10 rows, it's time for us to do those gorgeous puff stitches that make it look like a braid down the front and the back of our pullover. Now, if you want to add more width to this in terms of um, bust size, you can do so in this section. Just make sure that you also do the same in the section on the other side to keep it even from left to right of your body. We are going to start this next row by doing those single crochet stitches and then we'll go right into those puff stitches. So for row 11, I'm going to start with a chain one and then single crochet in the back loop only for the very first 10 stitches. So now we've done those first 10 stitches for that um, bottom rib look. And now it's time for us to start working those puff stitches. Now for the rest of this across until we get to the last 10 stitches, this is how it's going to be worked. We're going to skip the next stitch for now, and then we're going to work into that next stitch. So skip one. And then in this one, we are going to do a single crochet stitch. So we've skipped one and we've single crocheted. Now we're going to work back into that skip stitch and we're going to make a puff stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, insert into that skip stitch, yarn over and pull up one, and then we're gonna do that again, yarn over and insert, yarn over and pull up one. Now this is where if you don't want it to be a dramatic puff, you can stop right here and finish off the stitch, but I like to do it one more time to make it um, a bit more puffy, I guess you could say. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop. And now I have seven loops on my hook. I like to finish puff stitches by yarning over and pulling through the first six loops and then yarning over and pulling through the last two. The reason why is I feel like it really pulls the stuff, the puff stitch together at the top while making a nice stitch as well. So now we're gonna do that again. So make sure when you're skipping the next stitch that you're skipping the next stitch because this one hiding underneath here, we already worked a single crochet into that. So we'll skip the next stitch and single crochet in the next. And then we're going to go back to the skip stitch and we're going to work a puff stitch. And that's what we are going to repeat all the way across. I almost lost that stitch there. So we're going to skip one, single crochet, and then go back and work a puff stitch into that skip stitch.
just like that. And as you can see, these puff stitches are giving it a lean by the way that we're working them by um, skipping a stitch and doing the single crochet and coming back to that puff stitch. That's what gives it that great lean. So we're gonna lean this way. And then we, when we work it back across, it'll lean the other way, which makes it look like a really nice braid. So I'm going to finish this until I get to the last 10 stitches of this row. So skipping one and doing a single crochet, going back to the skip stitch and doing a puff stitch. I'll work that across until the last 10 stitches in this row. And now that we are to the last 10 stitches in this row, we will simply single crochet into that back loop only. Now for this next row, we are simply repeating the last row, but the way that we're working this as it's turned is what creates these slants to line up and look like a braid. So just like the last row, we're going to single crochet in the very first 10 stitches in the back loop only. So now that we've single crochet 10 in the back loop only, we're going to start doing the repeat of this again. So we're going to skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next, and then go back to that skip stitch and do a puff stitch. So we're simply just repeating that row before, but since we've turned our work and we've got these puff stitches slanted, you'll see that they'll slant in an opposite direction, creating that beautiful braid. So we'll skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next, go back to that skip stitch and do a puff stitch. Repeat that all the way across until the last 10 stitches and then single crochet in the back loop only for the last 10. Now for this next row, after working those puff stitches, we can't really go back into our um, repeat of working in the third loop because we don't really have a third loop necessarily that we're gonna wanna uh, work into. We wanna leave these puff stitches be. So I'm going to start my row by single crocheting the first 10 stitches um, in the back loop only. And then after that, we're simply going to be half double crocheting across this row. We're not gonna be working in the third loop. We're just gonna work through both loops. We're gonna do some regular uh, half double crochet stitches just for this row. And then the next row, we'll go back into working it in the third loop. So I'm going to simply half double crochet across this row. And then after that, we'll go back into working into the third loop, just like we did down here. After doing the row 13, we'll be able to do that. And for the size that I'm making for the size, medium, I will do um, rows 14 through 20, um, working those in the back loop only. So row 13 is just regular half double crochet. Row 14 through 20 will be half double crochet in the back loop only. Of course, starting and ending each row with those 10 single crochet stitches in the back loop only. So we're working the same as we did in this section after we work this row of half double crochet. And then we'll just be building this out and coming on back. Now we have our first body section done, and now it's time for us to simply work on the back section without doing the neck. So what we'll be doing is creating space for that neck by not working the next row completely. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my work. And then we're going to start the same way we have started the rows at this point so far with this single crochet. So we'll start by chaining one and single crocheting the first 10 stitches in the back loop only. And now we're going to be working that half double crochet in that third loop that's on the front of the work on the row below for the next 66 stitches. Now, depending on what size you're making, this will be a different uh, count uh, depending on which size that you are doing. But for size medium, this will be 66 half double crochet stitches, and then we'll stop. Now, after half double crocheting the 66 in the third loop, we will have a total of 76 stitches for this row, and we are going to turn and leave the remaining stitches in this row unworked. And then we're going to be working this section. But when we're working back the other way, we're going to be starting by doing the half double crochet stitches in 66 stitches. And then in the last 10, we'll do the single crochet stitches in those last 10. And these will be in the third loop and the back loop. So we'll continue to do that until we have the back section. So you're rotating between starting the row with a single crochet and starting the row with a half double crochet. But we will do that for a total of 20 rows for this section for the size medium.
So now that we have 20 rows for this back section, we can go ahead and grab our scissors and fasten off. We are done with this section for now, and it's time to mirror this. So repeating it just mirrored on this other side because this will be the opening for the neck and we'll wanna do these 20, 20 rows again on this other side, which means we will need to be skipping some stitches for the neck here. So what we will do is we'll go back to this row and we're going to count over for 20 stitch, 24 stitches. So we're gonna count over 24 stitches and then attach our yarn. So now that we've skipped 24 stitches, I have inserted my hook into that third loop because we're gonna be working those half double crochets in the third loops here. I'm gonna chain one to get started and then half double crochet into that very first stitch. And then working in that third loop all the way across, we are going to half double crochet 66 stitches. So this is the same number that we had done over here without that cuff portion. So we'll half double crochet 66 until we get to the last 10 stitches where we will single crochet in the back loop only. And then for row two, we're gonna start by doing the single crochets in the back loop only for the first 10 and then half double crochet in the third loop for 66 stitches. And we will do that for a total of 20 rows, the same as we did on this side. So now I've worked up this section and it's time for us to go back and do this section here, which is similar. It's mirrored to this section here. So we're going to go back to working across the entire um, length here. We're going to be working you know, at the back across the shoulders and down the front. So this long section again, and we will be doing these puff stitches again too, which is super nice. But before I go ahead and fasten off, I find it's quite easy to go ahead and set myself up for this next row. So we skipped 24 stitches here when we made space for the neck. So I'm simply going to chain 24 stitches before I fasten off. So now that I've chained 24 stitches, I'm going to go ahead and fasten off. I'll be working across this section, these chain stitches on this next row so that we can bring the shoulder stitches here, so the other side of the neck back together. Um, you can attach this if you want to. I don't tend to because I don't want to mess up my stitch count by you know, doing something over here when I do attach it, but it works quite nicely across. And the same thing you can, when you have these ends here, if there's any gaps or anything, you can seam that in later with the tail end. So now we're going to go ahead, now that we've worked this way, we want to turn our work because we're going to be starting from this right side once we turn our work. So we fastened off, we've turned our work, and now we're gonna be going to row one of this second body section. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my yarn to this side, and then we'll go ahead and start working this side. We're gonna work those first stitches in the back loop only, those single crochet ones like we have been doing. Now after working those first 10 stitches in the back loop only, now I'm going to start to work those half double crochet stitches in that third loop until we get to our neck portion. Now that I've worked across these stitches, it's time for us to work across these chains, making sure that your chain is not twisted in any way. We'll just simply work those chain stitches by half double crocheting into each one of those um, chains. We won't be able to work into that third loop yet because we haven't um, built that row. So this first time working across this section, you'll just work across the 24 chains for this size and then you'll continue working the rest of the row as we've done previously, where we will work the half double crochet in the third loop. And then for the last 10 stitches, single crochet into that back loop only. And I know working across chain stitches when you first do these type of rows, um, that first see, I even struggle a little bit because I'm working into these chain spaces and I love to work into those back humps of the chain. And um, we've kind of got a lot going on here, but we're just half double crocheting. And once you get all the way across, it gets easier. And if there's any gap right here, I can kind of see a little bit of a gap. We'll be able to just join that here with our tail end when we weave in our tail end. So we'll go ahead and finish out this row and then come on back and we'll talk about what to do for the rest of this section. So there is row one of this section. It's looking really nice. And now we can do what we've been doing before across the entire 176 stitches. And that's to start the row by working the single crochet in the back loop only. Do the half double crochet in the third loop all the way across until the last 10 and do the last 10 in the single crochet in the back loop only. 
Now you're going to do that until we have done through row eight for this. So we'll do, this is row one, and then we'll complete through row eight following um, just do this pattern repeat that we've been doing. And then when we get to row nine and 10, we're gonna be doing these puff stitches for this size. Now, if you're working a different size, you'll be doing a different amount of rows here because we're mimicking what we did on this side. So when you get to um, rows nine and 10, we'll repeat the puff stitch. And then when we get to the um, rest of it, so for rows 11, and then we're going to work nine more rows. So you'll do the same total amount of rows, the same thing over here, we're just mirroring it so that it um, looks exactly the same and it has the same width here between the puff stitches and the neck. So that's how we will uh, complete it over here. You might have a little bit of def uh, different row count depending on what you're doing, what size you're working on. But just to reiterate that, you're gonna work um, rows one through eight, working you know, like we have with a single crochet on each side and the half double crochet in the third loop only. And then rows nine and 10 are gonna be those puff stitches Row 11, we're gonna work those half double crochets across those puff stitches. And then we will work nine more rows until we um, have met the same amount of rows on this side. And that's how that will work out. And then once you've completed this long section, come on back because after that, we just have our last sleeve and we'll be decreasing that sleeve. So now that we've done this second body section, it is time for us to go ahead to, and turn and fasten off. So I'm just gonna fasten off my yarn here because now we're going to go back to working a sleeve portion. And uh, we did our, our second body section and now we have our second sleeve and our cuff left. So I'm gonna turn my work. And then I've already used a stitch marker here just to make it faster on camera, but I've marked 52 stitches in. So you'll wanna count um, from this right side, 52 stitches and then skip them. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach our yarn um, after skipping 52 stitches. So this is where we're going to start working that sleeve again. And the stitches that we're skipping are those that are underneath the arm. So if you have um, done more length to the sweater, you'll need to skip however many more stitches you accounted for in the length. So it will be the same amount of stitches that is over here that you'll want to skip here so that they match up when we fold and seam. Now for this size, I'm simply going to uh, chain one to get started and then half double crochet into that third loop. And I'm going to be working the same amount of stitches that our sleeve ended on here. We increased to this point. So now we're just gonna be doing the opposite. We're gonna be starting from here and then decreasing. So for this size, I will work 72 stitches across and then stop. Now, if you wanna double check your stitch count, it's always a good idea. And we will have the same amount of stitches. So 52 stitches left unworked on this side. And now we're ready to work the sleeve. So for the size medium, we're going to start by doing eight non-decreasing rows. So I'm gonna work the eight non-decreasing rows, just working back and forth in that half double crochet in the third loop for eight rows, and then I'll come on back. So here we are where we did our first row for the sleeve and then I did seven more non-decreasing rows for a total of eight rows at this point for the size medium. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work a decreasing row. So instead of increasing like we did on this other sleeve here where we did a tapered sleeve and we, we did some increasing because we were starting at the cuff, we are now gonna be working backwards and decreasing towards the cuff. So the very first stitch in the row, I will chain one, and then we are going to do a half double crochet two together. Now you can work these into the third loops or not. It's completely up to you. We can half double crochet two together, and then we're going to half double crochet in that third loop all the way across until we get to the last two stitches in the row. And now that we are to the last two stitches in the row, we will half double crochet two together in those last two stitches. And that's how we're going to work the decreasing rows. We've decreased by two stitches. And, and now we're going to be doing that more for this size. So each size will have a different uh, angle of decreasing. But for the size medium, we are now going to decrease on every second row 18 times and then we'll work non-increasing rows until we have a total of 46 rows for this sleeve. So very similar to what we did on this other side, we're just gonna decrease on every second row from here on out 18 times, and then we'll count all the rows and we'll make sure that 
If we need to do some more non-increasing row, non-decreasing rows, we do so. So we have a total of 46 rows because we want to match the sleeve rows over here. Now I just want to note if you change the length of your sleeve and you did that over here, you'll need to do the exact same amount of rows that you did on your first sleeve for your second sleeve. And if you did change the length, a lot of times it happens in here before any decreasing. So make sure that you kept track of that if you did. And then I will come on back when we get the decreasing done and we're back down to working on the other cuff. So now I'm at the point where my sleeve is decreased. You can see how it's just this nice tapering all the way down. And this is the same amount of stitches as my first cuff on the uh, first sleeve that we did. So now that I've decreased and I have a total of 34 stitches for the size medium, it's time for us to work on that cuff ribbing. And we're going to be doing it, and it's going to look the same as over here, but the process will be slightly different because we're starting with this edge already established. So I'm going to turn my work and then chain 11. I'm going to tighten down that last chain because that's our turning chain. And then I like to work in the back humps, but it's completely up to you. And I'm going to single crochet into each chain across, which will be a total of 10 single crochet stitches. And now that I've worked those 10 single crochet stitches, I'm going to go into the next stitch and slip stitch. And I'm doing that only in the back loop. So in the back loop only, I'm going to slip stitch into those next two stitches and then turn my work. After single crocheting in those 10 stitches, we're going to be slip stitching along the edge of the sleeve here so that we can join as we go with our ribbing. And each row of this ribbing will count as one stitch. So we've already done one row, which means we've worked the space for the first stitch. And now working in the front loop only, we are going to slip stitch the next two stitches from the sleeve edge. So I've slip stitch two in the front loop only. And now I'm going to turn my work and we're going to skip those two slip stitches that we just did and working in the back loop only, we will single crochet 10. So we're single crocheting 10 right back down those 10 stitches we did before, only this time we're working those single crochet stitches in the back loop only. And now I'm going to turn my work again. So we got to the end of the 10 stitches there. So our, our ribbing stitches will remain at 10 stitches. I'm going to chain one and tighten that down for a turning chain. And you might notice there's a bit of a gap here. And that's because I am not working through both loops on the very end. But if you want to, you can go back to that last stitch and you'll see it will be helpful for that very last stitch to work through both loops. So on this edge stitch, because it reduces that gap. Notice how that's a little bit cleaner. So now we're going to start this next row. I'm going to chain one, working in the back loops only, but for the very first stitch, if you want to work through both loops, that will help reduce any uh, spacing. Then single crochet in the back loop only, the remaining stitches across. And now that we're back down to the sleeve edge, we will work the next two stitches from the sleeve edge in the front loop only. And now we're going to turn our work, skip the two slip stitches, and in the back loop only, single crochet 10. And we're going to keep repeating these last two rows again and again until we've worked this all the way across this edge of the sleeve. See, we've got our ribbing started there. So we're going to work a total of 34 rows for this size of this join as you go ribbing. Now we're at the point where we can work the neck. If you would like to seam this first, feel free. If you are going to be seaming before working the neck though, I do recommend at this point where it's flat that we block it. It is so easy to block this flat because um, it's easy to lay out and pin on mats and you can block it to the dimensions and even weave in some of these extra ends. But once you're ready with it blocked and seamed or not, because you can always do what I'm going to do next, and we're going to work this neck ribbing before blocking. It doesn't make that big of a difference. It's really up to you. I'm doing it for time so that I can work on this ribbing tonight and get it blocked by tomorrow. 
So what we're going to do for the neck ribbing is we're going to join with a slip stitch at one of the sides of the neck. So we want to make this a little bit inconspicuous and we're going to join our yarn at the side of the neck. So we're going to grab some of those stitches and join. And these are the stitches, remember, that we had either skipped before or chained. I'm going to go ahead and join my yarn and, and then we are going to chain eight. And now I'm going to tighten down that last chain. It's my turning chain and we are going to single crochet into this second chain from the hook and the remaining across. So we will have a total of seven stitches for this ribbing. Now you can adjust that if you want less uh, thick ribbing or you want more thick ribbing. This is where you adjust it. It's how many chains that you start with. So now what we will do is we will slip stitch into the next two stitches. And then I'm going to turn my work. And this can get a bit hard when you've got an entire sweater. So the one thing you can do is you can place this entire sweater into like a shallow salad bowl on your lap and then you can just turn the bowl and you don't have to worry about all the sleeves and the other parts of the sweater if you just set it inside a bowl. It's easy to rotate on your lap. So now I'm going to skip the two slip stitches. So this will seem very similar to the ribbing that we did. So we're going to skip the two slip stitches and in the back loop only we are going to single crochet seven. And if you want a, a tighter edge, a nice clean edge on the um, neckline, what you can do, just a tip, is when you get to this very last stitch in the row, you can work it through both loops. And you can do that uh, for every stitch that's on the outer edge. You can work through both loops and it's a little bit cleaner. So we're going to turn the work and we can chain one, single crochet uh, in each stitch across, working through those back loops, for the ribbing and then we will slip stitch two stitches from the neck edge and keep on working the style of ribbing that we did for that last cuff. So I'm going to work till the corner till I get to a corner of this and then we're going to talk about that. So now I've gotten to a corner of this because it is quite a boxy neck. So if we want what we can do is we can do some slip stitching around these along these edges to reduce the boxiness. So what I mean by that is normally I would slip stitch into the next two stitches and turn. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my hook into one stitch, rotate and insert into the next, and then yarn over and slip stitch together. So that's one slip stitch. And then I'm going to do that again along this edge. I'm just going to insert into a place, fold my hook back to the front, insert again, yarn over, and slip stitch. So essentially we have kind of done a, a decrease along the edges here. We're just not, we're not, you know, slip stitching as many around that corner. We haven't decreased any stitches along our actual ribbing. This is still seven stitches, but we pulled in these edges by slip stitching through more than one, but still creating two slip stitches. And now I'm going to turn my work, skip those two slip stitches, and single crochet in the back loop only, just like we've been doing. And what that will do is it will reduce a little bit of that boxiness around that neck edge to make this ribbing collar look really, really nice. And as we move along this edge here, you're going to try to keep your stitches as evenly as possible. You don't want it to pull too tight on here. You want this to still lay flat. So be conscious of where you're slip stitching since we're not you know, slip stitching into uh, stitches there. We're just slip stitching across a raw edge. Uh, I usually a lot of times like to do three stitches per two half double crochet rows, but work whatever keeps your tension really nice across those and doesn't make it pucker or uh, add too much space in between there. We want it to lay nice and flat. So now that I've done a couple more rows, you can see where this kind of helps on that edge, just kind of bring it in and be a little bit less boxy than before. Um, and then if you, if you want to, you can always do even more decreases to see how it works out. But I'll keep on working this all the way around. And then when we get back, I'll show you how to join your very first edge with your last edge. Now that the ribbing has been worked all the way around, I am going to go ahead and join these edges together. And how I will do that is I've chained one and I'm simply going to go through the back loop of my working side 
and the back loop of the opposite side and slip stitch those together. Now an alternative way to do this would also be to fasten off and simply seam with a yarn and needle if you prefer to do it that way. But I'm just slip stitching the two back loops together from each of the sides and then I'll fasten off and weave in ends and then it would be time for me to block this. And that's what the seam will look like when it's all slip stitched together. And so now it is time for blocking. Now when it comes to seaming the sides, I have done it two different ways. You can simply use a yarn needle and thread and you can stitch together almost like a whip stitch along these sides here and up the side and across the arm and across the cuff. For this one, I'm going to show you how to do it by doing some slip stitching to join. First, I want to give you an example of when I used a yarn and needle to join. It's really not that noticeable. Um, this right here is my seam, the way that I did it. And then under the arm, this is what the seam looks like. So you can do whatever method you're most comfortable with. I just want to show you what it looks like a couple different ways. And so to do it on this sweater where I'm going to be using my uh, crochet hook here. I'm going to join at the very bottom. I like to go from the bottom of the sweater up under the arm. So I'm going to join down here and I'm going to join through the back loops here and then the back loop of the other side or the loop that's hanging out there. That very first stitch and then I'm just simply going to grab my yarn and slip stitch through both of those. Now, if you want to chain one to kind of secure that bottom, you can. And then from here on out, I'm simply going to be working this the same way I did the hat. So slip stitch in the back loop only or whatever loops available from the first side and then do that again on the second side. And I'm going to slip stitch that ribbing together. And then once I get to the part where I've got these um, half double crochet in the third loop, this is where we can do it a little bit differently if we want so that it kind of you know, hides the um, stitches a little bit better. So what we can do is we can go to the slip stitch. So grab that third loop. So we're going to grab the third loop like we were before when we were working that stitch and then grab the loop from the other side and slip stitch together. So grabbing the third loop and slip stitch together. Now this is how it's going to end up looking on this side, which looks really good. It's, it's really hiding that um, seam quite nicely and making it look like the design. And it also looks good on the other side. So you can kind of pick which side you want. This is reversible technically, but I'm just going to keep working this up where I underneath the arm, I'm going to slip stitch into the third loop of the side closest to me and then the loop on the other side. Or really it will look great wherever you're inserting your hook. Um, slip stitching it together leaves this nice look here that really blends it well. Now once you get to the underarm part, this is where I'm going to change the way that I'm slip stitching. So before we were just doing a slip stitch joining the two sides together, it looks quite nice. But for under the arm, if I'm doing the slip stitch seam, I am going to do what's called a flat slip stitch. Now at this point you could fasten off the yarn and use your yarn needle to do the rest of it if you wanted. But to do a flat slip stitch, we're going to then need our yarn kind of working from up underneath the sleeve. So I'm going to be working over this yarn for this first slip stitch. So I'm going to lay this down towards the center and I'm going to insert my hook from top to bottom on one side, working over this yarn, the leading yarn. I'm going to insert my hook from top to bottom from the other side. Then I will yarn over and slip stitch those together. And what this does is it, uh, when you do a seam, it keeps it nice and flat because if we were to do it how we were doing before and we were to line up the sides, it would leave kind of an ugly seam. So if we were to seam it like this, slip stitching, it, it would kind of be bulky there and not as pretty. So by doing the flat slip stitch, we're going to insert on one side. And a lot of times once I get to these V's, it's kind of nice to go down the center of them. Then the other side, 
yarn over from underneath and pull that yarn through all the layers. And that adds a nice uh, flat look on top of here too. And sometimes I will switch what side I start on um, and what side I end on in terms of like inserting on which side. And you're just rotating your hook around. Now this can be a skill that it does take a little bit of getting used to because it can feel a little bit fickly at first. But this is how I would prefer to slip stitch it together because I think otherwise you might get into a little bit of a mess of a seam slip stitching underneath the sleeves. But also, once again, at this point, you can um, fasten off the yarn and use a needle to do underneath the sleeves if you're not liking the way that it looks. But this is how a flat slip, slip stitch seam will look underneath the sleeve. Now, as I continue to slip stitch down this row, notice I am trying to keep this quite even by lining up the lines from each side across from each other. That's a great uh, guide when it comes to keeping the right tension. You don't want anything to pucker or pull. So I am doing about, uh, I'd say, th like three stitches from one point to the next. Um, but it's, it's really what makes it not pucker or pull on the fabric at all. You want it to, to lay nice and flat. So I'll keep doing this until I get to the cuff. And now once we get to this other cuff, we're simply going to work it the same way that we did before. So we can kind of, we can bring our yarn back out to the back here and poke it out the side. And then we're simply going to be slip stitching through the back loops or whatever loops are there. And that will complete the seam on one side. Um, it's good to take your time when you're seaming. Like it's a, it's a detail that you don't want to rush because making that seam look really nice will make it look really polished and finished. Um, and that's how we will seam down both sides. So if you want to go ahead and do that on the other side as well, then your sweater will be complete. Now, once you have your seams done, you have a gorgeous, gorgeous sweater that was so simple to make and fun to do. And you can wear it all fall or winter long. And I just also want to note, this also comes in sizes for the little ones. That way you can make matching or family sets, which is super fun. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back for more fun tutorials soon.